Jeff Stanek here with Figured Out Baseball. I hope everybody's having a great week so far. I wanted to talk with you today about the current state of Major League Baseball and how different levels of baseball value different things as opposed to what you're seeing at the Major League level. So if you're a young kid right now or a coach or whomever that watches a lot of Major League Baseball and you love the game and, and there are certain types of players that you want to be like or you want to coach players to be like, it's important to realize something. At the Major League level, what's valued right now for hitters is hitting home runs. If you don't hit home runs, you're not going to be a prominent player. You might have a hard time finding a job unless you can play really good defense. But on offense, it's it's all about the home run. On the mound, it's all about strikeouts. It's about velocity, uh, big velocity, and it's about strikeouts. Major League Baseball players are hitting home runs at record numbers again this year. They are striking out also at record numbers. Major League teams seem to be okay with that. But what's important for all of our subscribers that figured out to realize is that college coaches see the game a little bit differently. We talk with a lot of coaches at college um, at a lot of different levels. We talk with Division One, Two, II, and Three coaches, NAIA junior college coaches. We talk with Power Five coaches. We talk with coaches from small schools. But college coaches across the board, no matter what level you're talking about, seem to still value an older old school, if you want to call it that style of baseball, where hitters still can put the ball in play. They can still have a two strike approach where they shorten up, where they choke up, where they, they just try to get the barrel on the ball and make something happen. And they try to be a tough out. Um, you know, college baseball coaches still value guys that can steal bases. That's, that's a, a, seems to be at almost every level. Not that every team tries to steal a lot of bases, but I think there are really good teams at every level that are going to win by stealing bases, by putting pressure on you uh, by putting pressure on the defense, by running the bases hard, and by putting the ball in play, making the defense make plays. Whereas at the major league level, some of those things have sort of um, they've sort of gone by the wayside, really, with how important they are. And I think it's important to realize that because if you're playing at a lower level, meaning high school or below, or you're coaching at the high school level or below, it's important for you to coach your players so they're ready for the next level what the next level coaches want. Well, on the offensive side, they want complete players. Of course, they want big, strong guys. Of course, college coaches want guys that can hit the ball very hard, but it's not just about being in there taking donkey hacks and trying to hit the ball as far as you possibly can every swing, every game, regardless of the situation. College coaches still like to see hitters who can situationally hit. They do. They like to see a guy that can hit and run. They like to see a guy that can move a runner when necessary. They like to see a guy that with a man on third and less than two outs can still score that run. They like to see a guy that can hit the ball in both gaps. They like to see a guy, of course, he can hit the ball over the wall, but a guy that can do some other things as well. And I still think that almost, almost every level of, of college baseball, you still see bunting more so than you see, much more so than you see at the major league level. Um, so being able to be a complete offensive player is still important for you hitters out there that, that strive to play beyond high school in college and pro ball. Now, when you get to pro ball, you might do some things differently, but that's okay. Just do it when you get there. If you're hitting the ball consistently with a hundred mile an hour exit velocities, but you're hitting head high line drives around the field, not necessarily hitting the ball over the wall that much, you're still going to get drafted because what scouts can see is how hard you hit it. And all they're going to have to do, if they want you to be a bigger home run hitter, they're going to change your exit or, or your launch angle a little bit. Instead of having a lower launch angle, they're going to try to increase your launch angle a little bit so you're hitting more balls over the wall as opposed to just hitting balls in the gaps. And that's easy. That's not that hard to do. It's not that hard to be taught that at the pro level if you're hitting balls very hard at the lower level. So it's not like you're not going to get drafted if you're not hitting X number of home runs. If you hit the ball hard on a consistent basis and you show you can use the whole field, that is still very valuable to even to pro scouts. And they can see this guy can really handle the bat and maybe can be a guy that can be a 30 plus home run guy, but be multidimensional. You know, a guy that can hit a breaking ball out, a guy that can hit a ball in the outside corner out as well as a ball in the inside corner. That's much more valuable than a guy that's sort of a one-trick pony that can hit one pitch in one particular direction. That's all we can do. On the mound, at the major league level, you're seeing, you know, more velocity than ever. Guys that throw very, very hard. But what you also see at the major league level, I think, is guys that that uh, are throwers and not necessarily always pitchers. They don't really hit their spots that often, but what they're trying to do is basically throw their best stuff somewhere over the plate and trying to get a swing and miss. And the better their stuff is, of course, even they can throw the ball right down the middle with really good stuff, they're still going to get swings and misses, uh, as you're seeing by the strikeout numbers. But I would say the same thing is true with pitchers that are striving to pitch at the college level. I think there's more to, much more to being a college pitcher than just throwing hard. Now, 
velocity by itself will get you opportunities, but it's not going to get you an opportunity to be on the field in the spring. It'll get you an opportunity to put a jersey on, but if you're a guy that does nothing but throw hard, a college coach is looking at you like, I've got to I've got to teach this guy this, this, and this before he's actually going to be able to contribute to this team. So what's that going to do? That is going to limit your options in some ways. So you might still get an offer at a pretty high level, but you might only get one or two instead of a bunch of offers in that level if you could throw hard and had a second pitch to go with it and threw a lot of strikes. You know, if, if you throw 94 in high school, you're going to get a lot of offers. But if you throw 94 and can throw strikes you're going to get more offers. If you can throw 94 and throw strikes and have a wipeout slider or a really good feel for a curveball or a really good feel for a changeup, at least one pitch, if not one extra pitch in addition to your fastball, if not, you know, two pitches in addition to your fastball, you're going to get more offers the more you can show. Because the more things overall ability to get people out that you show at the high school level, the closer you are to being on the field in college, the closer you are to contributing to that college team winning, and, and it seems pretty obvious that the closer you are to doing that, the more scholarship money they're going to offer you. You know, two guys side by side, one guy's a 94 mile an hour fastball and doesn't really know where it's going, but he's, you know, he's six, two, got a nice, got a, a kind of a lean projectable body. That guy's going to get options, but the guy who's six feet, maybe not quite as great of a body, but throws 94, has a great slider, good feel for a changeup, throws a lot of strikes. He's very competitive. That guy, I guarantee you is going to get better offers because he's a more complete pitcher. Now, maybe the guy that's 6'2 or 3 is a better pro prospect just because he's taller, but as far as getting a college scholarship and having a chance to pitch at the next level, it's the guy who can get people out that's going to get the opportunities. I think it's important to talk about this because sometimes as young players, as young kids, we, we want to emulate what you see at the highest levels. And there are a lot of instances where emulating major leaguers is a great idea. But there are also some things that we see in Major League Baseball that we don't necessarily want to uh, to try to emulate or try to duplicate at lower levels. And the game, the, the game that you see right now where it's all about strikeouts on the mound and all about home runs at the plate, that's not necessarily something that is going to translate to a lot of success at lower levels. Uh, and it's not going to translate to a lot, of scholar, a lot of college scholarships as much as a guy that can show that he's a complete hitter or a complete pitcher. Hope this makes sense and hope this um, gives you some valuable information as we uh, sort of wrap up the Major League Baseball season here. And I, uh, from Figured Out Baseball, this is Jeff Stanek and hope everybody has a great rest of your week.